talking about helium today. Uh, you know, that stuff in, in party balloons, right? No, it's helium is, is really, uh, really important. And there's a new helium discovery that just happened in Minnesota. And we're really curious because, frankly, I don't know a lot about helium. But one person who does is the president and CEO of Pulsar Helium, Tom Abraham Jones. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much, and hopefully after our conversation, you can join the 0.01% <laughs> and your audience that knows about helium. Okay. Well, we'll be that much more uh, educated. I, so you're telling me that there was a new helium discovery in northeastern Minnesota. How did this come about? Yeah, it was, uh, I guess, a case of serendipity, right place, right time. But uh, I'm a geologist by background, and uh, I've been looking at uh, helium for over a decade now, and it's an incredibly rare and uh, hard to find gas. But uh, identified that part of Minnesota as having potential, but it was really challenging to know where to start. As, as you know, it's quite a large spot. Uh, but a, a company was exploring for nickel there, and then by chance they hit gas, and it turned out to be one of um, North America's um, you know, highest concentration helium discoveries. And uh, and that company didn't have interest in helium. and along came uh, myself and my colleagues and, and thus the company Pulsar Helium was born. Okay, dumb question. Where does helium live? Are we talking <laughs> deep, deep, deep or where is it? Yeah, we, well some of it's deep, deep, deep. I mean we've drilled down to just over a mile's depth. Um, but it's think of it like uh, natural gas or oil. It's in a reservoir in the ground, mm -hmm. except in our case uh, there is no hydrocarbons, there's no oil, there's no natural gas. Uh, it's helium and other noble gases. So uh, uh, now there's only recently been a, a real reason to, to look for helium. Um, in the past, it's always been energy, and uh, now with modern technology needing helium, uh, you could say this new industry has been born. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about the uses, because I think a lot of us, again, not to make light of it, but really the only thing I knew of was the party balloons. So why else should we care? Why is this such a big deal? Well, part of balloons is a very small market share for the overall use of it, and it's also quite a, a waste of a very valuable product. Uh, so we're talking about something which is worth significantly more than, than natural gas. Uh, but what it's used for, the best way to think about helium is what you want to keep really, really cold without it freezing, without it turning solid. And that's one of helium's remarkable properties, is that you can have it close to absolute zero, and it's still a liquid, it doesn't turn into a solid, and also doesn't react with anything. So its applications are in uh, semiconductors, so for making computer chips, uh, for MRI scanners, so that the uh, magnet can superconduct, uh, making fiber optic cables, uh, space launch as well. So it really is a very uh, high-tech um, commodity that we never really realized that we're quite reliant upon. Hmm. So you talk about just you know how sort of rare it is, and, and you mentioned to me that helium-3 is something that that I should ask you about because this is pretty remarkable. Do you want to explain what helium three is and why that is such a big deal in this? Yeah, so helium three is a is an isotope of helium. So helium comes in two forms. So helium three and helium four. Helium four is the one that we hear about all the time. But helium three is this uh, extremely rare isotope, and uh, it's got these applications in um, national security, so for border protection to pick up any radioactive material coming into the country, um, quantum computing um, to get the uh, to really cool down the uh, the computer chips there, so that they can you know accelerate and process at that quantum speed, uh, and then fusion energy as well. And so now there's this requirement for helium three. And uh, so much so that uh, on Earth it's very rare, but they found that there's quite large occurrences on the moon of all places. And uh, certain go government agencies have started to, to look into funding companies to go to you know, mine the moon for helium-3. And there's even a Hollywood movie out there about it called Moon. <laughs> but uh, what we found in our gas is actually that uh, we've got helium-3 concentrations that are really uh, of the same and potentially higher concentration than we see from the moon, and uh, it's in a gas, not in a rock. So what we're really hoping for is that uh, you know Minnesota could be a very uh, welcome alternative to having to travel all that way to the moon. How much of it is there? Do you know in 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 you know northern Minnesota, northeastern Minnesota? And uh, I mean, is there a limited amount? Once it's gone, it's gone. Or do you feel like there could be a lot more to discover? Well, it's it's a new occurrence uh, that we've been working on. So we've been the the first mover there. 
and uh, so we're still in the phase where we're developing out the size of the resource and so we've actually got a drill rig out there right now and um, so far we've had a hundred percent success rate uh, with encountering gas in all the wells that we've drilled so hopefully to answer your question I mean I'm feeling quite positive that it is uh, quite a large accumulation that we've come across what's the process like uh, I don't want to make you share any trade secrets here but you know drilling for it mining for it I'm not sure how what you call it how do you do that how do you collect it where do you store it so what uh, happens is when you drill down, it's a bit like cracking open a, a soda can. The, the gas naturally comes up to surface, and so it doesn't require any form of stimulation. When it gets up to surface, then, you know, through, through lack of better words, it goes through a series of filters, and then you put it into this um, cryogenic distillation, which is a very fancy way of saying, uh, put it into a very cold chamber and increase the pressure. Everything else turns into a liquid apart, uh, sorry, it turns into a solid apart from the helium, which uh, is a liquid. And then we crack the valve and out goes the, uh, the liquid helium into a uh, 40 foot container that goes onto the back of the truck to wherever it's required to go to. Wow. And then, uh, you know, people always uh, want to know about environmentally, you know, is this safe or what are some of the precautions that, that are taken? You know, we are pristine uh, areas of the state we, we hold so uh, close. No, certainly. So this is a, a real opportunity for the state because at the moment more than 95% of the world's helium is produced as a byproduct of natural gas. So obviously a hydrocarbon there. So uh, for us, we focus on primary helium, where helium is the primary economic driver, not associated with hydrocarbon production. Um, so it's a, it's a helium biased uh, reservoir and therefore has all the potential to be you know, one of the, the, the lowest footprint uh, helium sources there is. Mm. Uh, all right, uh, we would love to, you know, keep chatting and checking in with you to see along the way here how it's going uh, as we kind of head in, into winter here. What's next for, for you all? Well, we've got, uh, it's quite cold up there at the moment and Christmas is upon us, so mm -hmm. we're going to give the uh, the team a well-earned break and then we're going to hit the, uh, the new year quite hard with uh, continued drilling and then hopefully we can show the world uh, just uh, how big this uh, this resource is and uh, hopefully realize production as soon as we can. Oh, wow, and just bringing it back to the balloons one more time because this is so relatable. Uh, helium can be expensive, I, I think. Uh, yeah. is, this, is this something that financially you think could just be a boon? Most definitely, I mean, the price of helium is uh, orders of magnitude higher than natural gas. Um, Party City went out of business partially because the price of helium was so high for its mm -hmm. balloons. So really, uh, I, I see this as a, a wonderful opportunity for obviously for us, our shareholders and, and the local community. All right, Tom, thanks so much. We'll uh, check back in with you maybe after the, the new year and, and see how things are going. We appreciate your time today. Look forward to it. Thank All you. Right.